Hi, I'm Cody Grivno and welcome to Cody's Office. We've got an exciting lineup of products to ring in the new year, so let's get started. We'll kick off this month's show with a product from the Kambach Hobby Store. It's the Zeron Modeler's Toolkit, and it sells for $41.99. So what do you get in the Modeler's Toolkit? You get a pair of tweezer nose pliers, high precision mini scissors, and micro shear sprue cutters. In addition, the Modeler's Toolkit contains this durable protective canvas tri-fold pouch. You can order the Zeron Modeler's Toolkit and a variety of other hobby tools and accessories online at KambachHobbyStore.com. Our second product this month comes to us from Woodland Scenics. It's a three pack of canopy trees. It retails for $12.99. The canopy trees are designed for N, H, O, and O scales, and they range in height from two to three and a half inches. They come factory scenic and feature a plastic trunk and armatures, an optional detachable base, and a plastic mounting pin. You can find the canopy trees at your favorite Woodland Scenics dealer. Next up, we have a narrow gauge model from Bachman. It's the firm's ON30 262T Class 10 Trench Steam Locomotive. This ready-to-run model sells for $459. Some of the features on the 262T include Bachman EasyMate knuckle couplers, a removable water lift hose, and a backup light. Additional features include a pull cord for the whistle, factory installed and painted wire grab irons, and a number plate on the front of the smoke box. In addition, the ON30 262T features a dual mode TCS wow sound decoder with a keep alive capacitor and audio assist. Paint schemes on this model include US Army in three road numbers, Quartermaster Corps in one number, and painted black but unlettered. Now we're on to our sponsored product, which is the Model Rectifier Corporation Prodigy Advanced Squared with Wi-Fi. This digital command control system sells for $534.98. The Prodigy Advanced Squared with Wi-Fi comes with a base unit, a throttle, and a Wi-Fi interface for handheld devices, all with related cords. The DCC system comes with a power pack and a screw terminal for the main and programming tracks. The system has a maximum current of 3.5 amps. Some of the features on the base unit include an on-off switch, three cab jacks, and a fourth one here labeled factory use only, which you shouldn't use as this is for future upgrades. Now there's also a cab select button and the manufacturer recommends flipping this switch over to cab number one to cab number eight for faster response time. And the reason for this is explained in the instructions. Using the handheld throttle, you can activate a fast clock by pressing the time button. The Prodigy Wi-Fi unlocks smartphone and tablet controls for iOS and Android devices. No home Wi-Fi network or computer is needed, and up to eight devices can be used per module. Now I've got our Bachman 262T narrow gauge trench engine on the test track. Let's use the Prodigy Advanced Squared to test this locomotive. Now I've already got the address set to the factory default of three. We'll press zero to turn on the headlight. And now we'll ring the bell with one. And we'll give two short whistle blasts with number three. And we'll start it up. The Prodigy Advanced Squared with Wi-Fi is a real easy to use system. You can order it online at modelrectifier.com or you can get it at your favorite Model Rectifier Corporation dealer. Our final product this month comes to us from Atlas. It's the Atlas Train Kids HO Gauge Amtrak Acela Passenger Train. This set sells for $99.95. The set includes an Amtrak Acela powered locomotive and a first class car where the batteries are contained. You also get a business class car a cafe car, and a powered locomotive. 
The train is designed to run on the supplied 38 by 56 inch oval of track, which contains 12 curved pieces and 4 straight pieces. The trains are operated with this remote control, which features buttons for the headlight, horn, bell, and welcome aboard announcement. Forward and reverse are with these buttons, and the stop button is here. The neat thing about this train is though the models aren't scale specific, it's gauge for HO scale. So let's take this down to the MRT and take it for a spin. the modeling tip portion of the show. Over the years I've demonstrated different techniques for removing lettering from freight cars. Today I'm going to show you a new option and I'm going to give the credit here to Jeff at Shamit Car Shops for this one. I'm going to use some Solvacet decal setting solution and an Artis eraser pencil to take lettering off this exact rail gondola. Let me show you how it works. Okay so let's say I just want to remove the last three digits on this gondola here. So I'm going to put the Solvacet on first just over the numbers. And then with the setting solution wet, I'll come in with this eraser and remove the digits. Might take a few seconds for this to work, but eventually it'll start taking the printing off. And as you can see, the digits are starting to disappear. And the nice thing is, it's not going to damage the paint underneath. Now I'll just take a cotton swab and we'll wipe out the residue. Looks like I have just a little spot of that too left on there. finish things up. And there we go. It looks like we did go through a little bit of the red paint there, but that's easy enough to touch up with a micro brush. Then you can just gloss coat that panel, put on the new digits, and you're in business. You can find this Artist Eraser Pencil at most craft or art supply stores. And of course, Solve a Set, you can find at any well-stocked hobby shop. So if you're looking for a quick and easy way to renumber your cars, give this technique a try. Now we're into the viewer mail portion of the show, and I'd like to thank all of you for the warm Christmas and New Year greetings. They're very much appreciated, and we hope that 2020 is off to a great start for all of you. And now we're on to our first question, which comes to us from David. He wants to know, what is a winterization hatch, and what does it do? Well, David, first I'll show you what the winterization hatch is, and it's this piece right here that goes over the fans on this Kato E unit. There's actually two of them on this model. There's one in the back of the body. There's one just behind the cab, so there are two on this locomotive. Now as to what they do, I went over to the Trains Magazine forums and I found this great post here from back in 2008. The author did not sign his name other than his screen name is Railway Man, so that's where I'll give the credit to. And he writes here, the purpose of the winterization hatch is to redirect hot air back into the engine room to increase the ambient temperature and reduce risk of coolant freezing and fuel gelling. Now there's a lot more to his answer here, but that's kind of the basics of what it does. You have this big hatch over here that's covering the fans, so it's taking the air that would be going straight out through the fans, and it's just bouncing it back down, keeping that warm air in the engine room area. And these were common on electromotive division locomotives, and mainly on railroads that ran in cooler climates, such as the Chicago Northwestern. So for a very thorough explanation of winterization hatches, head over to the Trains Magazine forums and do a search for locomotive winterization hatches. This post was dated June 17, 2008. Our second letter comes to us from Sal, and Bob Welke also brought this up too, based on our discussion about switch rod problems in the previous episode. And that is to run the switch rod under the adjacent yard track. Now Bob Welke shared an example from his home model railroad and Sal pointed me to the Wisconsin and Southern Yard in Horicon, Wisconsin. So for point of reference, here we have the Horicon Depot. And this is the turnout that's in question right here. This is a driveway for employee vehicles and for crew trucks to get through. And as you can see, the adjacent track is pretty tight. So there's not a lot of room for head blocks in this location on a model railroad. This would affect the ability for the switch rod to go through its full range of motion. So what the Wisconsin and Southern did is put the head blocks and the switch stand next to the adjacent track, and then that switch rod runs through the adjacent track all the way over to the switch itself. So that's operated from one track over. But it's a prototype solution to a problem that we would encounter on a model railroad. 
And our final letter comes to us from Alan, and he noticed in the last episode when I was drilling the holes in the GP9 for the lift rings and the grab irons that I didn't remove the shell. And he was wondering if there was a danger that the swarf from the drill could drop into the mechanism or that I could have drilled into something inside of the shell, like the decoder board. Well, Alan, that's a real great point. I probably should have removed the shell. Having seen the mechanism before, I knew I wasn't going to be in danger of hitting anything underneath. However, it would be good practice to take the shell off in the future to avoid that swarf getting inside the mechanism and the working area of the locomotive. So thanks for that reminder. Well, that wraps up for Cody's office for January 2020. Be sure to check back next month when we celebrate the 12th anniversary of Cody's office. And we'll have some exciting news to share with you about the show. So we'll see you then.